Marshall Pruitt at Le Mans with Garage 56. We have Brandon Thomas. You see this amazing Chevrolet Camaro Z01 Cup car. This is VP of what? Vehicle design. Vehicle design. We got the right guy to tell us about this machine. Now, Brandon, I got to admit, we got some great drivers, an amazing team, amazing crew, all those things. What's the number one question that keeps coming in? What is it? Yep. What's different about it? What's the same to Cup? You're the perfect guy to take us for a little tour, uh, a video explanation of what we are indeed looking at. So why don't we start just looking at the front of this car here. Okay. This is obviously a cup car, but is it a full cup car? Is it different? What's this thing we're staring at? Okay. Well, obviously this is Garage 56. This is our Camaro Z01 for the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The project started with cup car and it started with can we make a cup car competitive in endurance race and there's a lot of things about a cup car that are very cup specific you know a lot of things about endurance car they're very endurance specific there's a lot of things about a new next gen cup car that are actually very endurance specific mm. so when we started the design phase of next gen for cup itself things like the gearbox the wheel bearings the uprights prop shaft, drive shafts, all of this running gear was set and designed to mileage limits that would encompass a 20, excuse me, 24 hour event. Meaning that no longer were you looking at drivetrain that was good for 500 miles or 1,000 miles. You were looking at drivetrain that was good for 12,000 miles. Wow. Gearbox service intervals of 3,500 miles to 5,000 miles. Where in the, in the previous generation of cup cars, we were servicing this stuff, you know, every event. So from the start, Next Gen really borrowed from GT in the fact that we wanted to make the car more durable, last longer, less service intervals for the cup teams running a 38 race schedule. Let's, let's get a deeper look into okay. this. So the chassis itself, where is the chassis built? Okay, the chassis is built by Technique Chassis. Um, and they, they are located in Concord, North Carolina. It is still a tube frame chassis, and we'll pop a couple of things yeah. down here. Let's take a look inside. What you see here is still cup chassis in DNA. So the roll cage, the main frame layout, the front and rear clips, to a large degree are exactly the same geometry as a current cup car, next gen car. What's different, as you start to see and look in here, is you start to see a lot of things like carbon fiber. Yes. So if you really look in towards the floor of this car, you see the carbon fiber prop shaft tunnel bonded into the car. You see a carbon fiber floor pan, carbon fiber rear walls, carbon fiber plating on the left side door bars. So all the things that are in the cup car for oval racing and big multi-hit accidents and things like that are all still here, but they've been upgraded to composite materials, Dyneema, uh, carbon fiber skins, you know, and, and all of our work wow. with Dr. Padillac at our R&D center on the safety side, the Delargas in Italy and Indianapolis, we went through all this work to basically, our goal was to make the thing as safe and make the thing as reliable as the cup car, but we had to lose a lot of mass. That's what I wanted to ask about next. So. Obviously, if we're talking about going 200 miles an hour at Talladega, everything you mentioned, we need crushable structure. We need things that are going to take energy and reduce that to protect our drivers. Yes. Coming here, though, we're looking to be at, well, I'm not a great representative, but as, as light and skinny and as fast as possible. Tell us about how much weight has been removed from a Camaro Z01 in its cup form and also some of the other areas you might have taking some of that mass down? That's a good question. The, the easiest thing to look at on a race car when you say, I want to save weight on it is, everybody stares at the chassis and like, well, we'll start drilling holes in the chassis. Yeah. Well, we did do some of that, obviously. Carbon fiber paneling uh, lost a lot of mass. Um, when we built the front and rear clips, we chose a different material uh, to build the front and rear clips of, but it's not even available in tubular form. For wow. the rest of the so all the rectangular tubes on this car are made from sheet steel that has been folded into 
rectangular tubing. Wow. And then welded to make rectangular tubing. That's no joke. That's no joke. The, the, like I said, this is, this is, from front to back, a very well thought out, very well engineered vehicle uh, to, to accomplish this task. And so you lose mass that way, and that's, that's a certain amount, right? But really the goal, the, the, the best strategy when you're trying to lose mass on a race car is to look at every single piece and part that's on it. And if you can take 5%, 10% off every piece, you can take amazing amounts of weight out of this thing. So all this bodywork is built by our same bodywork vendors. Yes. You know, five-star builds all the, what we call the perimeter bodywork kind of the greenhouse down. Roush Composites builds the greenhouse. Fiberworks builds the underwings. This is half the weight of a regular next gen greenhouse. Wow. Built out of the same tool by the same people. But also Just a different laminate. But also in a place that is valuable performance wise, taking weight off the top, the getting top. that center of gravity down. Twenty five percent lighter for every perimeter bodywork piece you see here. Built out of the same tooling by the same people. Phenomenal. Just a different laminate. What's the, uh, what's the curb weight this is coming in at, minimum weight they asked for? Make up a great number. 2,960 pounds. I like the sound of that. Now, what we looked at was the homologated weights of all the GT cars. So we used, my buddies at Delara, Alex and Luca, we used them to look through all the GTs that have been homologated recently. And we know what the mass and what the air is <laughs> all homologated at. So we tried it. We need to be in that same range. Now, 2960 is on the high end of that range. We're right there with two or three of the cars.